Um, just want to pray, Father, this morning afresh we draw nigh into thy presence and we come before you, Lord, and we thank you for everyone that's listening on this morning. We just pray for everyone in every home. And Father, we just pray thy blessing upon each and every one of us. And we pray that blessing to extend to our families and everything connected to us. And we thank you for all these things. We just pray God's peace, God's presence at this time. And Father, we just pray that you would move and open our hearts and our understanding. And Father, this morning we just pray that Jesus could say the Spirit of the Lord upon me. just want to pray the Spirit of the Lord upon me and there's no need to preach. And I thank you for it. It's great to see everyone. You know, uh, I was I got up quite early this morning, but I was, about 20 minutes ago, I was in here, 25 minutes ago, and I felt the Lord asked me to read a, ver a verse, and I want to read you the verse. It's found in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. And it's, this is the verse. But I fear, lest by any means as a certain beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that's found in Christ. Can I tell you this? Everything out there wants to, hold, wants to corrupt your mind, whether it's media or anything. And uh, at the end of the day, that's what happened to Eve in the garden. And the next verse says, For he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit that which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well hear him. You know, and this morning, I've been trying to, let me show you a wee thing, let me piece of paper here. I've been trying to sort of set out, and Roy this morning and myself, we've set things out this morning, and we'll set this out maybe roughly a wee place, but I won't. The place of conversion, we'll be telling you about this, but there's a point. But God wants you to move you on. Now that you have come and received the Lord Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you've come into a relationship with God. And your identity is found in your spirit, and you spirit man of who you are. Now, part of your soul, which I have my spirit, soul, and body up here, I could reach out, but soul and body, your mind is not renewed to know your identity. So, there's plenty of things out there to try and corrupt your mindset. And if you don't know the right teaching, you will receive maybe a teaching which will give you a mindset, but it might take you away from the mindset that God has on your identity if you are in Christ. Right? And Royal will that set out later on, but what I want to show you a thing. I've been studying personally another thing, and I didn't really want to speak on it this morning. But the separate reason is, I see a wee thing in Genesis. I'm going to ask you a question here. Because you're all standing there. I asked this question myself. I never got saved till I was 33 and a half years old. How did I live in this world? Did I live from my spirit? Did I live, or live from my soul and my body? Can I tell you this? I'm not, I don't want to win, but hold on. See, soul and body. We here will go to tell you. I've told you before, from the age of maybe four or five to the age of 12, I was five, I know at least five children, so maybe six. <clears throat> at the age of 14 and a half, I left home. And I went to go and join the army, and, and, and I went to stay with my sister for a fortnight's holidays. And I was supposed to go and join the army, for it, uh, done the papers and everything. And I ended up, I never went, and I went to live in Belfast, or sorry, Lisburn. And I ended up getting a job in Belfast at the age of 14 and a half. I have never, ever been home since. When I say that there, I come down to visit my mum and dad, but I've never went and stayed at home. And um, what that learned me in life was, at the end of the day, that childhood I had never really affected me. Okay. But all I'm just saying to you is it hardened me in life to look after myself on the money. Remember one night going to a place and started playing cards. And I'm now playing cards. And the very first hand I lost two wages of two weeks' wages. The very first hand. Now I come home that week. That night, 
And I never asked my sister or enemy for money. And for two weeks, for one week, I had no money. And that's the way I was, I just to be able. But what I'm trying to say to you is, I learned to look after myself. And that's why I vowed myself. I will never, ever leave myself broke at the end of that again. And the reason why I always used to carry money, but that week, I ended up lost and everything. And I'm thinking this, how did I live them years of my life after that? I honestly believe I live from my soul and my body. Okay. I've, I've been trying to tell you the spirit, the voice of the spirit is your conscience. The voice of your soul is reasoning. And the voice of the body, I'm not, I'm not reading it down again, but the voice of your body is your fivefold senses. I honestly believe we received that in the fall. In the fall of Adam. So we actually come out of the page. That's what Adam, that's what we received from Adam. We received a soul with reasoning and a body with fivefold senses. Pre-saved, we received by the fall from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil from Adam. I didn't want to preach from preaching that, please. That's the way I'm thinking all this out myself. And the Lord, could I that's what we'll say here, please. At the end of the day, if Adam had not a fell, we are sure you going to do here. I'm going to lift this page up. I'm going to give you a blank page. In the garden, I've brought you thing down here. How did Adam live in the garden? In total analysis. He didn't even know he was naked to partake of that, the fruit. He lived in total analysis. God was a source. God was a supply. He had everything. He needed nothing. He lived in this total place of everything God supplied. Okay. The only thing he had to do, he depended on God for it. He looked for nothing else. Right, what do you say? He lived in total obedience, walked in total obedience, and he met God in the middle of the day. And he fellowship with God. And we tell you this, what happened? He lived in that place of total innocence. Lacking nothing. Read here I'm going to say. I honestly believe when we get saved, we have been restored right back to where Adam fell in the garden. And everything that was restored to us. I knew our problem. Our problem was when Adam fell, he gave us a sin nature. And that old nature was dealt with on the cross. But listen to what I'm going to say here. The mindset of the old nature is still there. And it still operates through our soul and through our body. It operates through our soul through reasoning. And it operates through our body through the fivefold senses. Now that has never been removed. Do you and I learn to live and yield our flesh to the control of the Holy Spirit. But I tell you, yes, God, we can be restored right back to total dependence. For God becomes everything, and God brings everything about in your life. But the problem is, that soul and body and reason is always there. But there's only one, what do you call it? Can I, can I read this verse again? If you go to, if you go to uh, Second Corinthians chapter 11 again. But I fear lest any mean, by any means, as the serpent began to leave through his subtlety, so your minds. Everything out here today is trying to deal with our mind. Now, I've, your mind belongs to your soul. Your soul is not saved. It's your spirit that's saved. Your mind needs renewed a spiritual renewal. Which God does spiritually you to understand our identity of who we are in our spirit.
so that we can walk in all the fullness that God has in us and our spirit, which He's given us. Now, to, here's the key. Your mind is made up, sorry, your soul is made up of three parts. Your mind, your will, your emotions. In the garden, I don't think Adam had a problem in them three parts because he lived in total innocence and that spiritual realm. When he, when he ate of the tree of good and evil, it seems to be the soulish part he began to understand and know. And that's what the Lord says, did you eat of the tree of good and evil? You know why? I was naked, Adam said. He told you were naked. He told you were naked. He began to know because he had it, the fear of it, good and evil. I never, I don't know where this, everybody, in the fall, I was always taught we received a sinful nature. But no one else believed we received. We received a carnal mindset by operating through reasoning and operating through your fivefold senses. And that, believe it or not, gives us a carnal mindset. And that mindset after we get saved is the problem. So we need a spiritual renewed mindset. See the will. We need to leave our will down and yield our will to the control of the Holy Spirit if we want. And emotions, our emotions must get to a stage where we're led by the peace of God. But can I tell you this in all honesty? For us to be restored back to that state on in this life, I think we'll always have the soul and the body. And it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit and the revelation word can we live in this total analysis again. Now, this is in my mindset what I'm trying to tell you, and I don't know how this has come across to you. We we assure, we assure you another wee thing. In my, in my Christian walk, I get saved. Did I tell you this? And every one of us is here this morning. We've said a thing that you and I have had a past. And could I tell you this? This last few while I've been trying to take you and showing you that God has a future for you. Are you hear that? A future. The place of conversion leading into a true maturity, which will bring you to a future of maturity which God wants to bring us all into. But to you deal with your past, your past sins are forgiven, but there's maybe things in your past. I'll give you an example. Them things in my life, them cares in my life. We hear this, I heard, we hear what I heard. One in, two, one in 20 people in Great Britain have been sexually abused. That's what they reckon, one in 20. So I know many million people in Britain as, so say for example there's 20 million, there's one million people running about with hurts and problems in their past. Now if you don't know how to deal with them hurts of your past, that's where them hurts will keep you in, in your past. Even though you're saved, if you don't know how to deal with them hurts and deal, deal with them problems, but tell me this, there's people run about with fear. And I, me and Roy, we've said, we've said things out this morning now. Fears, there's families, there's relationships, there cares of this life. And there's future, future, look at the things that's happening. Round about us, coronavirus, all these problems and all these cares. And can I tell you this, that will keep us there in our soulish realm for a long time. Because we will not mature unless we know how to deal with these issues. And especially in the emotional realm. Right? We show you a revelation the Lord gave me years ago. Now, I've told people in here, and I don't know where I'm, who I'm talking this morning, we see the revelation the Lord showed me years ago. I had problems, but it wasn't to do with my past, it's just different issues in life and relationships and different things. And this man used to come in here, he used to be a counselor, and he's still a counselor. And I come in here and I met with him every so often. I'm going live here. I'm just going to tell you what the Lord's done. And next thing, all of a sudden, I thought I was going to go and talk to this man. 
But this man came in here one morning, he started talking about the people who's talking about, uh, about the pension. And I said to myself, well, certainly not, I'm not going there. And I was home that night, sorry, the next morning, I opened my Bible early on. And I read Isaiah 9, verse 10. Now listen, this is me personally. I had problems and cares, and they were in my emotional realm. And they're to do with different things. But I ask you a question. That's maybe where you're at today. There's problems there, there's issues. You know how to deal with them. But I tell you, as we see this revelation, Isaiah 9 verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. I got a revelation. The Lord's my counselor. Please, I just like light bulb come on. Hey, the Lord's my counselor. And we hear this. Every problem I have, I started to take, and we hear I don't. Let me tell you this. Every problem I have, I just took and I just handed it to the Lord. I'm not going to set this one. I just handed it to the Lord. And I'm going to show you what supernaturally happened in my life. Please see this now. Go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. See if you don't deal with the past. Go ahead, this down. See if you do not stay, stay with the past. Yeah, go on. That's where you're going to stay, even though you're saved. You know why? You can't move on to your future. Okay, sorry, you're present. And you know why God has a plan and purpose and all for you for a future? No, you can't move on to that future. But you know why? As you think in your heart, so are you. You'll stay there. But them issues and cares is in your life, and all their problems. They will hold you back and keep us. Proverbs 23, verse 7, A.V. As you think in your heart, so are you. That's not as big as you are in your spirit. No, as who you think you are in your... I'm going to tell you, beware that nobody deceive you and corrupt your mind so your minds be corrupted. As you think in your heart, so are you. You have to get to this stage. Do you know how to deal with your past? But I tell you this, the Lord, I'm worth, the Lord is everything to you and me. And everything you need, the Lord is to you. And I got a revelation, the Lord's my caretaker. Every problem and every care I have, I take it to the Lord. Let me show you this, Psalm 37. Psalm 37. And I started to read the Bible and I started to see these things. We read Psalm 37. Commit thy way unto the Lord. I mean, listen. Can I commit your way unto the Lord? No. So, listen, they're mine. Problems. We should some of step on. Commit thy way unto the Lord. We'll bring a chair on. Right. Leave your bed, please. Right. I'll meet you in the chair. Sorry. The chair. So I'll commit my way unto the Lord. We hear this. Trust also in him. So I commit my way, but don't tell me problems. Lord. I commit all these problems and all these issues to you. And I leave them in your hand. And I trust that you will sort them out. We hear the next few verses. And he shall bring it to pass. Who will bring it to pass? The Lord will bring it to pass. We see the next verse. And he shall bring forth thy wretchedness as the light. Now that's not positional righteousness, what you've got in Christ. That's personal righteousness or your personal walk of righteousness in this life. He shall bring it to pass. Remember, I told you the Lord's everything. In the garden, what did Adam have? Adam had to do nothing. He just loved him totally the You know what I said there? What did he do? He loved him total dependence. See all these problems in your hearts, they are not yours. And the only one that can handle them right is the Lord. But you must get that revelation to commit them to the Lord. See your families and cares and problems. We hear this wee thing this week. I know it's going to sound strange to people, some people. Uh, I have family. But listen this here. I, have, I cast all my care upon the Lord. 
my family has got animals. So my daughter's got three cats, one dog. And I personally commit the three cats, one dog to the Lord. I know that we this. And I years ago this man rung up the house to me one night and my wife or I wasn't there, my wife took a message. And my wife says to me, that man's ringing up about his beast. He's asked me to pray for his beast. And she said something, I don't want to say it. And he took to God, you go. Me and this, I wasn't cheeky, I was just so. The next thing I went the next morning, she's a calendar beside the fridge. You know what it says? The righteous man prays for his beast. Who does he pray for? His beast. Do you pray for your animals? Now, we hear this. We hear what I'm going to say here. I have another son, and he is a cat. I knew I was here. I, forgot, I haven't been praying for that cat for two or three weeks. I never thought about it. And my wife, my mother, and I, Wednesday night, says to me, William's cat's messing. And I says, oh, Lord. I forgot to pay for the cat. Me and this. And those who got to bed and I say, Lord, you see a paw, you just pray for a paw, Lord, you bring him home. Boy, don't care about that cat. But you know, I don't want to say very much about it. We tell you, Lord, just you pray. I pray, Lord, that you restore, bring that cat back and restore the cat. I get up the next morning and Karen goes to work and she texts me, the cat has come back. And I says, how many Praise the Lord. She you know it's a care. Here I'm coming down. Casting all your care. Me and she, so that's commit thy ways. I'll show you a man casting all your cares. Who you want to? Lord. See if you want to run this race. You have to know that revelation, what I'm trying to tell you. The Lord is your source for everything. And He wants you to totally. Yeah, we'll go back to the Apple pages. I've done four this morning. That's teaching me for that. If you want to follow the Lord in this place here, you must know the revelation of committing everything to the Lord. There's no way. If you think it's your responsibility to carry all these problems, you'll get very weary. And that's what's happening in the world today. They're entering in a place where they're getting very weary in their mind. There's no way. That's what you're, they need soul rest. And that's the pl second place there. You get spirit rest when you came to the Lord Jesus at conversion. But you need soul rest. You need the revelation that all these cares and all these problems, they are not yours. They are the Lord's. But your responsibility is to take them and hand them to the Lord. And we here are going to say, trust him. And he shall bring it to pass. You're not to take them to the Lord. And worry yourself to pieces about them. You must come to that place where you get that revelation. The Lord is my caretaker. It's my job to give him my cares. Mm -hmm. And my job to trust him and leave them there. Now, there's other places. Proverbs 16 verse 3. Proverbs 16 verse 3. This man came to me one day. And he knows the, what the things I went through in my own life since I got saved. He says to me, what about such and such? And I says, oh, that's not my department. He looks at me, what do you mean? I says, the Lord's my caretaker. That is not my department to worry about that. And he just looks at me. But hang on. I says, no, the Lord is my caretaker. He carries all my problems. But you know why? I give them to him. And that's what I learned. I had a revelation, the Lord is my caretaker. And see what I told you, that you call his name the wonderful counselor. And I got a revelation, I mean I got a revelation the Lord's my, if you could understand what I have been through since I get saved, there's no way I could go through this stuff I'm telling you. But I tell you yes, the Lord is your stuff. The Lord is your source. The Lord is your supply. And the Lord is your caretaker. Because see if you don't learn to deal with the past and give them to the Lord, that past stay with you. That will come and haunt you. But you have to come to a place where you let me show you a song. I'm not going to be quoting these Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. What are you here I'm going to do here? What am I doing here? I'm left another. Here's my works. Who am I giving to? Give them to the Lord. Why? They're not my responsibility. 
listen, Adam was back in the garden. God supplied everything. Well, if I commit everything to the Lord, you know here, and he's my source, he's my strength, and he's my supply, what's going to happen? But I tell you, yes, if I live from that spiritual realm of the Lord, then I guess the Lord, I got a revelation, the Lord, whatever is needed in my life, the Lord will bring it to my life. And I'll trust him for it. Basically, yes, I'm going to show you this for you. Uh, put in all women, 1 Peter 4, verse 19. That's it all. And these are, these are sitting out in a sheet this morning, some of them. I never spoke that about the garden. 1 Peter 4, verse 19. Right. I'm going to get rid of the show. Okay. Sorry for coming back forward, but here we go. Here's this way here. 1 Peter 4, 19. Uh, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the kingdom of their soul to him that will do him. See, when you start to live for God, did I tell you yes, there'll be the things come against you and people come against you, tell us that you don't know what they're doing. But wait till you ask, your soul realm is going to do flip-flops and your emotions. If you haven't learned, the Lord's the keeper of your soul. And you hand everything over to the Lord and to his hands. We have read this verse again. Wherefore, them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their soul. It doesn't say commit the keeping of their spirit. Commit the keeping of their soul. And see when you're in that soulish realm. That's where you're in this realm here. You're, you're in this realm for your emotions and your mind and all these problems. If the Lord's if you haven't got spiritually renewed and get a revelation of the Lord, your caretaker, your mind and your emotions are going to do haywire. Now, what, what I'm going to show you here now. What do you see? 1 Peter 1, verse 5. 1 Peter 5, verse 6. Sorry. 1 Peter 5. Let me see this verse. I want the second Peter. In the first show. Okay, like 1 Peter 5 verse 6. Humble yourself. You must get to a stage as you walk in your Christian life, and you learn that stage of humbling yourself, casting all your care upon the Lord. See all the cares. Oh, I don't, you don't understand the problems I have. You cast them on the Lord. Oh, but you don't understand so and so, cast it on the Lord. Casting all. Your cares upon the Lord. Why? For He cares for you. You know why? I mean, it. I got a revelation of the Lord's my caretaker. I, uh, my car is not here, my wife. My wife just said, Are you not worried about certain things? I don't want to mention the, the, the hurts and things we've been through, different things. He says, she says, You have only one answer, you know. You give it to the Lord. I say, If you ain't better. But please, this morning, I don't know who I'm talking to. And the problems in the first, just you take a many people in this great Britain are hurting from sexual hurts and things. And I tell you this, you need to come to that place where you let the Lord the lust, the past, no, the past, the past, the past. You need to come to that place where you release that person that hurt you. And you lay down to God. And you ask God, the Holy Spirit, to give you the grace to forgive that person. If you do that, that hurter just keep still hurting you. And believe it or not, I know it's a very sensitive area, but I know this, you will not move on until you get a revelation and listen. I'm saying that. <coughs> we I show you a wee thing. Uh, See all the hurts and all the problems that people have done in you. You must leave them down. And what's this? Even the cares and the problems of the family. Learn not to pick them up again. Take them down and leave them down. If you pick them up, Lord, I pick this up again. I'm sorry. I ask you now, I reach it again onto you, Father, I trust you. And can I tell you, yes, God will do a supernatural restoration in your past. And you will look back in your life, maybe not for a wee while, in years to come, and you'll see how God restored your soul and your past. And you'll look back and you'll just see how the supernatural work of God begins. If you go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 42. 
I don't want to say personally things for if I was talking in here. We see it, Genesis 42. We can find the verse. Genesis 41. Joseph brothers came along. When Joseph seen the vision and he told the father of the vision, he told the brothers. And then the day the, the brothers took and they put him in a pit and they were going to kill him. And he ended up going into a slave into Egypt. And all them years and different things he never met up with. But later on God supernaturally restored Joseph, all things back to Joseph. And as a lesson for him in the past, Joseph's past never held him back. There's no way it never affected his present. And I tell you this, it did. His present did not affect his future. But I'll tell you this, if you don't learn to deal with the past, even though your spirit's saved, you will not be able to move on to the present and start to enjoy this Christian life. You'll endure all these things and the problem will be probably in your mind and in your emotions. What well, says Genesis 41? Verse 51. Now just think of all the hurt and all the problem that Joseph encountered. So we show you this, if I could pick this up now. Genesis 39. Joseph was sold in a, as a slave and I think was potted for bottom and restored him to his house. And we see what it says here. Genesis 39, verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. Can I tell you this? No matter what you've ever been through, and you've been saved, can I tell you, just get this revelation. The Lord is with you. Who's with you? The Lord is with you. Can I tell you, I've lived that verse. I know by revelation the Lord is with me. We hear this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Everybody else may leave you. No, the Lord says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You need to know that there, the God of heaven is your source. And God of heaven is your supply, and God's going nowhere. He wants to walk with you right through all the stages of life, and He wants to be everything to you. We have Joseph here, and the Lord was Joseph, and He was a prosperous man. We hear Him going to say here, You and I today, if we've received the Lord Jesus Christ, we are supernaturally blessed. Listen, you need a mindset of that, because you know why the God of heaven is with you, and the God of heaven. Supplies everything wants you need. But I wanted to buy the Lord, and he was in the house of his of the master Egyptian. We hear this verse 4 and Joseph found grace in his sight. We hear this verse 5. The Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for the sake of Joseph. See, when the people come connect to you, they will be supernaturally blessed because of the association with you. That's the position you've been brought into. But you need to know that mindset. You need to know when people connect to you and walk with you, they are supernaturally blessed because the God of heaven and the Lord of heaven is resting on you and walking in you. But if you don't deal with the past, you will not be able to operate that in the present because you will live within your mind. Your mind will hold you back in all them areas. We see, I'll go to Genesis 41. I'm going to hit, hold on, I'm going back. Genesis 41. Genesis 41, verse 51. And Joseph called the name of his first son Manasseh, for God said he had made me to forget all my toil and all my father's house. There's things happening in my life, and this, I read that verse one night. Lord, you made Joseph to forget this. And Lord, you made Joseph not to remember that stuff. And the Bible says you are no respecter of persons. See all that stuff that's trying to come back and won't go away from me. Lord, will you take that out of my mind? I tell you, supernaturally, God took that all out of my mind. And can I tell you, I don't, I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm asking you, maybe, and I have a right to stay there. The things that's happened to us. But can I tell you, you give them to God, you present them to God, and you commit them to Him, and trust in Him, and God will remove that past. And He will make you forget. Because I tell you, that's the only way to do it. We hear the next verse. And he named the second, he named the second called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful. Who caused you to be fruitful? God. Why? God caused you to forget your past. God brought you in now, the place where he can present you fruitful and make you fruitful. But here's the key. In your, oh, 
you know, many pages have done this. I, I can see a lot of things. I'll just say this, we hear this. Though I get a revelation of Lord's my caretaker, I haven't even moved on to the peace of God. The sun the sheep we set up this morning. I get a revelation, I'm doing nothing unless I have peace. And we hear this verse, be anxious for nothing. What do you mean? But you don't understand what's going on with the finances, what's going on with the family, what's going on with the future, coronavirus and all this. Be anxious for nothing but in everything. By prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind. Where's your heart? Soul is friend. And part of your conscience. Where's your mind? Part of your soul. So what's there to guard your heart and mind? The peace of God. And we have said out this morning, we went into the Greek, the peace of God is a device, like on your computer, a firewall to stop Satan attacking your mind and your heart. And you'll read that in the Greek word Naoma. I used to, st I started to walk with God. And I started to have a peace. And I got to a stage where I would do nothing unless I had peace. And I did not know for years that there was a firewall stop and state in the of my mind and my heart because of the peace of God in my life. And there's another verse that says in Colossians 3, let the peace of God umpire your life. Or, you know, I, let the peace of God, St. Martin says umpire. Okay then. The peace of God is there to guard your heart, guard your mind, and umpire your life. And that's what it says in AV, to which you are called. You are called by God to let the peace of God Guard your heart, your mind, and your life. And be ye thankful. Colossians 3, verse 15. Can I tell you this in all honesty? You will be able to let go of your past and you will step into a place where you can enjoy your present. There's no way. What are you going to do here? All the problems, all the cares, all your burdens, Psalm 55, verse, all is on the Lord's. You give them to the Lord. And did I tell you, yes, you live in that peace and enjoyment and let him bring out it. Every, well, what about, the, what about the call of my life? Let God bring it about. But you, what about, I need this, I need that. Let God bring it about. I'm telling you, God is your source. What did Adam in the garden? He lived in total abundance. And he totally dependent on God. And his problem lay when he took of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He stepped into a place that Step into a place where his soul and his body operate in reasoning and operate in the five full senses. And here's the problem that's what we inherited. That's what I believe we inherited. And the problem is now, God wants us to restore back that we are God as everything. I'm going to finish. What time is it? You know what time? No, sorry, we'll pray. Father, we thank you for the, your word this morning. And Father, we thank you for the revelation that you are our source. You are our supply, you are our strength, and Father, you are our caretaker. And Father, this morning, in front of everyone here, we just pray, Lord. Father, we just pray to draw alongside, Father, everyone. There's maybe ones here with cares and problems and things that's happened in the past, and they're maybe flooding back into their minds. Father, we just pray that, Father, we take all them cares and we commit them to you now, and all these problems, and we trust you, Father. And there's three verses coming into my mind, Psalm 138, verse 8, A.B. He will perfect that which concerns me. Who will do it? The Lord will perfect. And his timing. So, Father, we commit this now into your hands. And we thank you for everyone. And we pray, Lord, that you would do a restoration if there's necessary in each one of them that we're listening. And we command that blessing now and we thank you for it. In the name of the Lord Jesus.